my last video was about the uh, Filmic Pro app and I did a video about that because I use it often with my mobile phone to shoot b-roll footage and some other stuff as well. I've also shot a lot of uh, videos with an external microphone with this app and what I want to achieve now is more stable footage. I've ordered three gimbals and wanted to choose the best for my needs and I have ordered first of all the Smooth Q gimbal, that's the cheapest one in the field. The second one is the TGI Osmo Mobile, that's the most expensive one in the field. Right in the middle I've chosen uh, the Zion Smooth 2 and that's the gimbal uh, which is priced feature-wise somewhere in the middle. Let's start first of all what are my needs. I'm usually shooting on a Android phone, a big one like this one here, a OnePlus 3T. It's similar to the Galaxy 8 for example or 8S and it's quite heavy, it's big has a 5.5 inch display and I usually also shoot with my external microphone here <clears throat> that's the uh, Rode VideoMic Me and you can just attach this together with the dead cat to your mobile phone and then it's working as a headset and you can also monitor here if you like to let's compare those three gimbals and let's see what they have to offer So the first gimbal in the field is the Zion Smooth Q. It costs roughly 150 euros on the internet. I got mine for 130 because of a special offer. And it's the cheapest one in the field, so price tag is most definitely the best one on the market right now. And you can get a decent package with this. First of all, it has a huge battery, 21,000 milliamp hours, um, and it lasts for roughly 12 hours. So it didn't charge it twice by now because I've just started testing it. It features also the usual controls like a joystick, record button, then also a mode button where you can select which gimbal mode you're in, and a zoom slider and then here you have a micro USB port and also a quarter inch mount for your tripod. So what are the other pros? Uh, it has the biggest payload of all those three gimbals. The balancing is straightforward and you have a case for the gimbal. So this one here. Um, that's quite nice because the Smooth 2 for example didn't have a case with it. It's a really well-rounded good package. You can also hold this mobile phone with an external mic but it's a bit fiddly to get everything up and running so that's better with the Smooth 2. Um, and the rotation can be blocked but that's due to the fact that it's not built for this uh, use case so usually you would not shoot with an external mic uh, or usually you would shoot with an additional accessory like something like a, a hot shoe mount here that you can just attach a Rode Video Mic Go for example. And also the phone can be or the rotation can be a bit blocked, can be somehow a bit strange but it should work. What are the drawbacks of this gimbal? So first of all my biggest drawback is the built-in battery so you can change the battery by yourself um, and if this will uh, somehow lose its capacity over time you are somehow stuck with a gimbal which is not working at all or has a really bad runtime and you can change the battery. That's obviously the biggest drawback here. Uh, second drawback is that the motors are not protected so they don't have uh, electronic protection against overloading for example or uh, misuse so you could start up the gimbal without any smartphone and it could happen that the motors are damaged. That's the only gimbal in the field which doesn't have any uh, yeah, protection for the motor. On the other hand, who really starts a gimbal without mobile phone, you would ask, yeah, seriously, just bear this in mind. And one other drawback is the uh, Zion apps on Android. So I use Android usually to shoot my stuff and the drawback here is that those Zion apps uh, are not that regularly and good updated on Android as on iOS for example and they just added features uh, the last couple of weeks or month which were formerly just on iOS and also the Bluetooth pairing is not that good on these gimbals from Zion. And one drawback for me and that's why I've just ordered the Osmo Mobile at all is uh, the remote control for Filmic Pro. 
So you have remote control for the Zion app with this one, but not for the Filmic Pro app. Maybe it's up to uh, Zion to uh, just come up with an SDK or I don't know what uh, to just support uh, this here for Filmic Pro and maybe also other app developers uh, to just hook up those remote controls here because that's quite versatile. For example, just use this slider here for controlling the uh, focus would be really great. Other than that, I don't have that much drawbacks. Okay, then let's get to the other one, uh, the bigger or more expensive brother, that's the DJI Osmo Mobile. Um, I think that's the most famous mobile phone gimbal on the market right now, but it's also one of the most expensive ones. And due to the fact that it's that expensive, I have expected much more from it than it's really doing uh, compared to the other two gimbals. Let's first start with the pros. Um, this gimbal is well built. It's not that plasticky built like the uh, Smooth Q, so the ergonomics are a bit better. You have a grip that, that has more feel to it. It's well built. Uh, you have a full metal build here. Um, then you have also your usual tripod mount, your remote controls, your buttons here for start recording, changing the mode, on and off switching. And also what's quite nice here is that you can fit in the phone really well with this mechanism here. So it's working really good. It's the best one from the three, this uh, screw here. It's quite convenient to just put in the phone and to just uh, screw this until it fits. Um, other than that you have uh, the usual stuff like balancing with a screw here, sliding in and out. You have an interchangeable battery compared to the Smooth Q. Uh, that means you can just put another battery in when this is depleted and that's quite nice. But it's also a con, so I will come to this later. The biggest pro for me is it pairs with the Filmic Pro app. That means you can control uh, focus and aperture and exposure levels uh, with this joystick here. And you can switch between different control modes for Filmic Pro with this button here. And that's really convenient, but I tried it out and it didn't make that much sense because usually you're faster when you use the on-screen dials. What's also nice is you have two LED indicators, so it's not dependent on some blinking intervals on the LEDs like on the Zion gimbals. It's better because it's color coded, so you're faster in getting an idea on what you're doing. And you also have this uh, trigger here in the rear to uh, just switch different modes or can just lock for example the gimbal. The active track on this gimbal in the native DJI GO app is better than on the Zion pendants but uh, not that much better that it would justify such a price tag. And what's also nice is there's a carry bag included um, and the community if you have some problems or questions it's really big and you stay in the same ecosystem for example when you also use something like a DJI drone or uh, some other gimbals from this company. If you use already DJI products this is maybe good for you because you won't leave the ecosystem of DJI but that's up to you to decide if this is really the way to go. Let's come to the cons of the Osmo Mobile. Um, there are a lot of cons because I was a bit frustrated and also a bit disappointed about this gimbal. Uh, first of all the price tag is really high, it's 330 euros by now. Uh, I grabbed mine on eBay for example for 230. It was just a, a lucky punch somehow uh, to just get this, this cheap. But even though it's 100 less it's not justifying the price at all. So first of all, what's my biggest concern here is it's the uh, really, really uh, strange way that they limited the way of motion. So it's just uh, getting this far and this far in terms of uh, rotation axis or panning axis. So it can do a full 360 panning. And that's not that cool because you are then limited to your uh, selfie camera when you want to do some uh, vlogging style stuff. Or you have to just hold it uh, like this, so just do it the other way around and then you're somehow limited and you don't get any control here. The other thing is that it's also limited in terms of the rotation axis in this case here. So for example you couldn't move further away, further down than this to rotate to the front and 
also for this movement here. Third one, uh, what's also disappointing is this really small sensor here and before starting up it's checking if there is a smartphone. It's somehow not recognizing some phones. For my phone for example I have a black, mud black case, it's not recognizing it. So I have to hook it up here without the case and that's not the way how it should work usually. Um, you can deactivate it in the app but that's working so so. And also with bigger phones, the payload is not described anywhere on the web, but somehow at 182, 200 grams, and that's the lowest payload of all the gimbals. Compared to the price tag, it should work better. You can hear the motors working, and also the Osmo Mobile is vibrating a bit when you are moving the gimbal, which is not the case on the other gimbals. The battery life of this is a joke, so you have an interchangeable battery, of course, but uh, those cost a fortune compared to the interchangeable battery on the Smooth 2, for example, which are roughly, I think, 30 euros for the one of those, and they are just like 970 milliamp hour batteries, so it won't last longer than three and a half, four hours. And I think that's a total fail, so it would have been better to include batteries with a bigger capacity and also to, I don't know, at least for this price include an additional battery or just make them cheaper. And also when you use bigger phones, uh, it's not uh, at all capable of delivering that good performance, so the gimbal is always somehow blocking the movement and it's always uh, getting in the way and it's not working that good from my perspective. One of the other things that is not that cool is the missing tripod mount on the bottom. So you have some proprietary uh, tripod mount here. So if you want to mount some external microphone here or you want to mount it through a tripod, you have to purchase additional equipment from DJI or some third party sellers uh, that are quite expensive and that's not that cool. And the users with an external mic hooked up directly to the gimbal, it's impossible with this one because it can't handle the load and it's also somehow blocking a lot of movements. <laughs> So last but not least, let's talk about the last gimbal in the field here, that's the Smooth 2 by Zion. Uh, the build quality on the Pro side is the best, so it's all metal built. Um, it has an interchangeable battery, so therefore it's quite nice to also change batteries on the go when one is depleted. You can also charge this one via the micro USB port. You have a joystick here, which is also clickable, so you have uh, one finger thumb control somehow. Uh, and also camera controls as well as a slider for the zoom levels. And also the build quality overall of the uh, smartphone uh, holder here is well built and everything is quite nice. What's also on the Pro side is you have a quarter inch tripod mount here and the counterweight here. So you can also use this with a smaller or bigger smartphone quite well. Uh, and also it holds very well the uh, bigger phones up to 6 inches like the Smooth Q. But the payload on this one is 200 grams compared to the 220 grams specified for the Smooth Q. Uh, so it's a bit less but from my experience shooting with both and testing them out it's quite similar compared to each other. The Smooth 2 also has a protection for the motors so it's recognizing when the motors are overloaded and it's shutting off com uh, not completely but to a standby mode so that's also good with this gimbal. One thing which is uh, on the neutral side is the joystick is a bit uh, more fiddly maybe for some people for me it fits quite well it has better haptic feedback and it's also quite nice to get this on the click level here even though some people maybe accidentally would uh, somehow push this or maybe while pushing move this around something like that the one thing with the joystick is uh, the auto turning by 180 degrees takes some more practice than on the smooth Q, for example because you misleading you could somehow push the joystick and sometimes it's working not that good. So pushing three times this uh, joystick uh, results in a 180 degree shift of the gimbal. And also what's maybe neutral to maybe also a con is 
those LEDs are just blinking so you just have a interval blinking indication on, on what's your current status you're in with this gimbal. To the cons, uh, compared to the Smooth Q the rolling angle is not as big. That's maybe disappointing to some. For my cases and my usage it's not that important because I didn't encounter any limits here. It's, even though it's still better than the Osmo Mobile, I think the ergonomics are maybe a bit different or not that good as on the Osmo and the Smooth Q because the uh, grip here is very small and very short. So for me it's okay, so I have a decent grip here and I like it, but some maybe don't like it because it's not that ergonomic uh, and not it's just full metal build. And, uh, what I also don't like is this uh, counterweight here, so you can screw it on and off. Uh, but it's somehow weird because uh, it's blocking the gimbal in the movement and when you want to uh, pack it together for transportation, you have to screw it on and off all the time. That's a bit fiddly sometimes and it takes uh, some seconds longer to balance this thing in the beginning, but I think uh, when you start shooting you should take your one to two minutes to just balance your phone and to just get everything right and up and running. As the only one of those three gimbals, this one doesn't have a carrying bag, so you have to get some additional uh, case for it to, to transport it safely. Uh, one other downside for the Zion gimbals overall, also for the Smooth Q, is that the firmware upgrade is not doable via the mobile app. You have to download a desktop app and some zip files to just accomplish a firmware upgrade for this one to, for example, get everything up and running for motion time lapses so that the gimbal is moving while shooting the video. That's not that cool, so maybe in the future this will work better. <laughs> Because I like mostly the build quality of this one more than the one of the Smooth Q and also I'm a big fan of uh, interchangeable batteries and long lasting devices. I've chosen this one to go to and to use uh, and also the build quality overall was better and the overall impression of this one was a bit better uh, compared to the Smooth Q. So I hope you liked it, I uh, hope you are now a bit more clear on what to choose comparing price tag to build quality to feature set and I can just recommend uh, grabbing not just one but more gimbals and try out what's best suiting for you. See you soon in the next video. Give it up. Peace.